Good morning and welcome to our live stream service from Knockbreda. You're very, very welcome uh, wherever you're watching from. We're glad you're able to tune in uh, with us this morning. Uh, so I'm so glad to be able to continue like this with our live streams. We'd much prefer to be back in church together, but that time uh, will come. I trust that you're following all the health service instructions, but remember, if there's any way we can help you at church, uh, please do phone me, phone me at the rectory, um, and we'll see what we can do uh, to stay in touch and to help out as best we can. I'm going to give you Rebecca's songs for this morning, uh, so you might like to look them up on another device, find out the lyrics. Uh, it is Well With My Soul is the first one. We'll sing that just a moment. And then Everyone Needs Compassion. So it is Well With My Soul and Everyone Needs Compassion. So thank you to Rebecca for being with us this morning and to Tasha who set up um, all the technology for us. Uh, here are some good news stories from around the church uh, for this week. Uh, you should really uh, check out Mark Hawes interview with the Arneels that you find on the YouTube uh, channel, not free to YouTube channel, Paul, Ruth and Isaac uh, talking about their faith and encouragement uh, during lockdown. I'll just also tell you that uh, the diocese is planning 10 days of prayer beginning on Ascension Day, that's Thursday week, so I'll give you more details about that next week. Uh, this week, the Tuesday night prayer group meets on WhatsApp, and to join us, uh, just contact me, or maybe to send a prayer request for someone, uh, again, please send me a message uh, about that. The Rainbows met this week somehow online, and a big thank you to Amy, Judith, and the team uh, for that with work with the girls. Pathfinders and X-Ray are meeting online every Sunday, so straight after this service at half 11 for Pathfinders and then X-Ray this evening. Uh, we're planning an all-age uh, service on YouTube for next Sunday. So next Sunday morning, rather than go to our website for the live stream, uh, I'm going to ask you to go to uh, our YouTube channel. I'll try to send you a link to that if, if you haven't been there before, but you'll find an all-age service there that we're preparing this week. It'll be pre-recorded. That's why we need to go to YouTube, and uh, we trust that the boys and girls will take part. If you know any children that would like to take part in that, please send us a message. We'll get them involved. It's to encourage them and to encourage our young people, uh, so please, please do get them involved if possible. That's next Sunday. Send a message to me or Johnny. Uh, to get involved in that family service. There are free Explore Bible Reading notes online if you go to the Good Book Company's website or you can find uh, the link to that on our Facebook page. And I would love to read the Bible with you uh, online if you want to go a bit deeper into faith. Uh, Biblica is a Bible reading program that takes us through the whole New Testament in eight weeks. And I'm starting that with some folk this week so if you'd like to join us, we'll meet once a week on Zoom, just for half an hour or so to see how we're getting on. Uh, but I'll send you the details about the program if you'd like to read the whole New Testament over the next eight weeks. And there's also Christianity Explored, which I've done with lots of people before. And again, just get in touch uh, for that. Now, there's plenty of announcements for this morning. Uh, let's commit the rest of our time together in prayer to the Lord so I would ask you to bow your heads, please, and let us pray. The Collect for this uh, Sunday. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honor, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to invite uh, Rebecca to sing uh, to God's praises, It is well with my soul.
Well, a big thank you to Rebecca for leading us in that piece. Now we're going to spend some time in prayer, and there's so much to be praying for, uh, so I would ask you to join with me as we bow our heads together. We begin with a moment saying sorry to God for our sinfulness and wickedness. In Psalm 86, the psalmist prays, and we pray with him, have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call upon you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. And we do pray to you for mercy now, Lord, knowing your forgiveness. And again, how you've told us in the Psalms, Psalm number 86 again, great is your love towards me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. You, O Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. And in Christ, those are words of assurance for us this morning. Amen. We continue in prayer, Lord. Our hearts are bruised. We are anxious. We are worried about the ones we love. We are saddened about this uh, coronavirus. Thank you that we can be honest before you. You know us and you have entered into our woundedness. You see our frailty and continue to love us. You alone are our hope, our strength, our counselor. Jesus, you are our shield in the storm. Pour the oil of healing upon us. Have mercy, comfort the sick, bring peace to those in sorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Lord, we thank you that you are the one who never leaves us. You are utterly faithful in times of sorrow and joy. On mountaintop or deepest valley, you lead and sustain us. You are our shepherd. We pray for those who face great challenges in this season, those with underlying health issues, the weak and the elderly, those with disability, those caring for children with special needs, the lonely and the fearful. Lord, may your presence bring strength, hope, and peace. You are our shepherd. We thank you for all those in the emergency services, those who may be risking their own health to keep us safe, those overwhelmed and exhausted by the demands placed on them. Lord, give them encouragement, energy, and wisdom. You are our shepherd. We trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. We praise and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ in our prayers, the one who became man, who is alive today, and who has promised to return. Loving Lord Jesus, you are the eternal God who was born humbly and became a man for our salvation. We give you honor for sharing our human life with all its limitations and for identifying yourself with our sins as you died for us on the cross. We praise you for being alive today and that we can experience your risen presence and power in our lives each day. And we thank you for your promise to come again in majesty, that you will recreate a perfect heavenly world in which you will reign in glory forever and ever. Amen. And we'll say together the Lord's Prayer, just as we bring our prayers to a close. In the traditional form, Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, now it's time for our Bible reading this morning, and we've been reading through the book of Deuteronomy as we've thought of preparation for when lockdown is over and how we want to prepare for that time, a a new start, a fresh start, a bit like Moses was preparing the Old Testament people, the Israelites, God's people, uh, for a new life in the promised land. So, we're going to read from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. And I hope you'll reach for a Bible, follow along with me, uh, especially as we move into the sermon after this. I think you will need a Bible just in front of you if possible. And it's Deuteronomy chapter 8, and I'm going to read uh, the whole chapter, verses 1 to 20. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to him and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce, and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron, and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, Praise the Lord your God for the good land He has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe His commands, His laws, and His decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble and test you, so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms His covenant, which He swore to your ancestors as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed like the nations the Lord destroyed before you, so you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, another short prayer, please, just uh, before the sermon. Well, Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for this opportunity to uh, come together like this, Lord. We pray that you'd bless us all, uh, both here in church and in our homes. Uh, Help us, Lord, as we think today of your word to us. Uh, Please do soften our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit and build us up in faith and hope and love and in appreciation for all that you're doing for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So I hope you'll you'll keep that section of Deuteronomy open in front of you. Uh, We're going to look at several chapters this morning, uh, but uh, please do have it 
open there at chapter 8. Has the world forgotten God? Especially in the West, have we drifted from our Christian moorings and somehow forgotten God? In the middle of the American Civil War, 1863, Abraham Lincoln warned his fellow countrymen, we've grown in numbers, wealth and power, as no other nation has ever grown, but we have forgotten God. I wonder what he would say now. Alexander Solzhenitsyn, the political prisoner and outspoken critic of communism, declared this to be the root problem of the modern world, which gave rise to the gulags and the death camps. He said, if we are called upon to identify the principle of the entire 20th century, men have forgotten God. You do hear people sometimes asking why this pandemic has been afflicting us. Is it some sort of reprimand from God, an admonishment for the world forgetting him and rejecting him? Well, that's a big question, uh, too big to answer definitely, and yet we can look at it another way. How do we get God's blessing? We don't want God's reprimand, but how do we get God's blessing? Well, chapters 7 through to 11 of Deuteronomy are all about how Moses taught his people about getting God's blessing. And there's a lot uh, for us here as well. So far, Deuteronomy has asked us to trust God. That's really chapters 1 to 3. God has brought us this far on a journey with him, and he's proved to us that we can trust him, says Moses, in an ancient sermon that he's giving. But what does it actually mean to trust God? What do trust and faith in God look like? Well, he goes on, trust in God means trust in his word. And that is Deuteronomy chapter 4, the end of Moses' first sermon, which we looked at last week. You're trusting God when you're trusting in his word, the Bible, and following its instructions and commandments. That's what demonstrates that God has done a transformational work in your life, that your heart has been drawn to trust in Christ. You can only see that Jesus is in your life by the way that you follow his instructions for your life. Your faith flows out in the way that you obey the Lord. Trust and obey, as the old hymn puts it. So stay close to his word because that is what will keep us close to God. And that's what we've learned so far in the book of Deuteronomy. Now Moses emphasizes the blessings that flow to the person who trusts in God. So we're moving into his second, second of three sermons now. And we're going to cover a lot of ground this morning. In fact, five chapters, believe it or not, chapters 7 through to 11. So hold on tight as we move along quickly. These chapters all hang together. They're part of Moses' second sermon, and they finish at the end of chapter 11, where Moses challenges his congregation to choose the blessings of the Lord. So you see, he's been outlining all the blessings that God has given them in the previous five chapters. And then he says at the end of chapter 11, choose these blessings, choose to receive them, choose to follow God's word. It sounds easy. Who would not choose to live with all the blessings of God? Except it's not so easy. Because while Moses certainly tells us about all God's blessings, we're going to look at them in a moment, he also has to describe some dangers, some risks. And while God showers the same sort of amazing blessings on us when we try to follow his word, we also have the same risky dangers as Israel had. So for each chapter, five chapters this morning, for each chapter we're going to look at a blessing and at a danger associated with it. Well, chapter 7, first of all. And where else could we start with the blessings of God? Where else could Moses start than with God's love? For the Israelites, 
and for their ancestors before them, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were chosen and rescued and redeemed all because of God's love. As we can read in, chapter, in verse 7 of chapter 7, and as we read these verses, uh, let's think about how the same blessings come to Christian people in the gospel. So verses 7 and 8 of chapter 7, the Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples, but it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your ancestors that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. You see, it was not because they were better or stronger or bigger than other nations that the Lord chose Israel, but simply because he loved them. That is the way God operates. He blesses with his love. And love of God is highlighted again and again in chapter 7, although we don't even have time to even glance at verses 9, 12, and 13 or at the numerous blessings that Israel will enjoy in the promised land in verses 13, 14, and 15, which all spring, all those blessings spring from the love that God has for his people. Remember, the Israelites are about to invade the land of Canaan in a never-to-be-repeated war. This is a one-off it's not a model for any other war in any other way. And they will be given the victory in that war because God loves them. He's chosen them. He set his affection on them. Why? Why them? Do they merit it? No, it is just because he loves them. There's no deeper reason to be given than that. Just as there's no deeper reason for a Christian person who asks, why does he love me? Why has he saved me? It's not because I'm any better than my neighbor. I don't deserve his love. I don't deserve his heavenly land that he has promised to me. It's just another unwarranted blessing. He just loves us. God just loves us, and we cannot really probe much deeper than that. However, there is a danger here, and indeed a danger to look out for in all the blessings of these chapters. And in chapter 7, the danger is that we cheapen his love, that we take it for granted, that we just presume it's God's job to love us. But no, we must never do that. We must never cease to appreciate and be grateful to our gracious and loving Lord when John's gospel says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, we have to understand that the world in John's gospel is anti-God. So John's gospel in that famous John 3.16 is saying that God's love is incredible because the world does not deserve his love. None of us does. Now take care to follow his commands and decrees and laws, verse 11, as a demonstration that we belong to him and as a proof that we know and value his love. Let's move on. Uh, what's the blessing in chapter 8? This was our reading this morning, and it begins with a reminder that the Israelites have just come through the wilderness. So Moses constantly reminds them that for them, the wilderness was a classroom, a schoolroom where God was the teacher. And he was teaching them to depend on him for all their provision. And provision is the blessing in this chapter. God provides. That's who he is. That's what he does. After all, we can all see how he has created a fruitful earth with enough for everyone. He's a provider. He provides. And for Israel, he did so with water and manna in the wilderness to teach, verse 3 of chapter 8, that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So the lesson in the wilderness class 
was that you can depend on what God has said. Every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord, if he has promised it, it will happen. He will provide. Has he promised daily bread? Then he will provide it. Has he promised forgiveness? He will provide it. Has he promised heaven? He will provide. So, is God going to bless the Israelites with provision in their new land? Of course he is, says Moses, abundantly. Chapter 8, verse 7. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. The land is going to be bountiful, and the people are all going to be satisfied. What did they learn in the wilderness classroom? God has promised, and you can trust His Word, every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. What are we learning in our lockdown situation? That you can trust God when He says He will provide. You can trust Jesus when he says that he's the bread of life and that those who partake of him will never hunger. For the Israelites, the provision that God gave them was physical, the land, the fruit, and so on. For Christians, the provision is primarily spiritual and heavenly. That's the difference between the Old Testament and the New. But what is the danger here? Well, Moses says that the danger here, as we think of God's provision, the danger is pride. The people might forget the Lord, forget His commands, forget that it is He who has provided. Verse 17 of chapter 8, verse 17, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. Uh, There's a well-known clip from The Simpsons uh, where Homer is saying grace at a dinner table. With a table laid down with food and drink, he prays, Dear God, we paid for all this ourselves, so thanks for nothing. Well, I suppose it's meant to be humorous, but it's a bad reflection on our well-off Western world. Ingratitude towards God, pride, dangerous pride. If there's one thing this lockdown has taught us, it is that mankind has not solved every issue. We're highly skilled, yes, with advanced technology, but it's still possible for a virus to spread around the globe and grind things to a halt. And there's very little we can do about it. It should throw us back to depend on the Lord. It should make us thankful for all that He has given us in the good times. For his provision. Well, the blessing of God's protection next is in chapter 9. Provision in chapter 8, protection in chapter 9. So, as Israel prepares to cross the Jordan, to invade Canaan, to battle what they consider to be the giant Anakites, God will protect them. God will drive out all their enemies. He will fight for them. He will protect His people. God is a fighter. I mean, He's also a loving shepherd, but at times He has proved Himself to be a fighter. He routed the Egyptians, the Egyptian army and chariots. That's mentioned here in chapter 9. And so He will surely rout the Canaanites and protect His people. So, what is the danger this time? Well, it's pride again. So, verse 4, for example, of chapter 9, verse 4, after the Lord your God has driven them out before you, do not say to yourself, the Lord has brought me here to take possession of this land because of my righteousness. No, it's on account of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is going to drive them out before you. You see, the danger is that the Israelites as they contemplate their victory afterwards, after they've been in the land, they might think to themselves that they were just a little bit better than the conquered nations. 
The danger is to feel just a little superior to those wicked Canaanites, to let pride in their own righteousness and goodness lead them away from trusting in the Lord. Moses reminds them what they're really like when he recounts one of the most shameful incidents in their history for the Israelites, how when Moses had come down from Mount Sinai, remember with the two stone tablets, with the gracious gift of God's instructions, his words, the Israelites were worshiping a golden calf. Could you believe it? They weren't righteous then. They had nothing to be proud of then. No, Moses says, you're not gold medal people, you're gold calf people. Beware pride, beware idolatry. Pride distracts us from God, gets us thinking about ourselves, and it can lead to idolatry. Beware of saying, I don't need the Lord, I don't need the word of the Lord, I already know what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. I'm righteous within myself, verse 4. I don't need his word to tell me how to live. But that is the way that leads to idolatry, to making God in our own image, to neglect what he has said about himself and to embrace what we think he should be like. God's blessing of protection in chapter 9. He will protect you. He will protect you. Keep close to his word trust in God, and he will protect you from sin, from idolatry, from the devil, from the world. He will keep and protect us. He will fight for you. It can be done. Uh, I read recently that the classical composer Dvorak began writing any new music uh, with the words, using the words, with God, and ended his compositions with, God be thanked. And likewise, Bach wrote in the margins of his music, uh, the letters SDG, Soli Deo Gloria, to God alone be the glory. They were trusting in the Lord. They were trusting in His Word. Well, on to the next blessing in chapter 10. So, we're keeping going. We're flying along and letting Moses rejoice, this time in the amazing mercy of God. So, the blessing of God's mercy in chapter 10. Chapter 10, verse 1 following on from the story of the golden calf that he's just been mentioning in chapter 9. Chapter 10, verse 1, At that time the Lord said to me, Chisel out two stone tablets like the first ones, and come up to me on the mountain. Also make a wooden ark. I will write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. Then you are to put them in the ark. You see, what blessing does that speak of other than God's mercy? The Israelites had rebelled against the Lord pretty much continuously as they headed towards the promised land. Did they trust Him? No, not always. Did they love Him? No. Immediately after seeing His miraculous signs on the mountain and in Egypt, they made a golden calf while they were on their honeymoon with Him. They were unfaithful. And yet still the Lord does not give up on them because he is merciful, undeservedly kind and forgiving and faithful to his people. How can we not be amazed at how he deals with his people? And of course, he is merciful today. The coming of Christ, his death on the cross, his rising again, his gospel going all around the world, his offer of forgiveness, it's all out of God's mercy. We don't deserve God's good gifts. We've turned away from Him. But in His mercy, His great mercy, He continues to bless us. In mercy, He gave the Israelites the Ten Commandments for a second time so that they could live by them and prove that they valued His mercy. Of course, the danger this time is that we undervalue His Word, that we think if He's going to be merciful, well, why bother trying to keep it? Why bother keeping the Ten Commandments if He's going to be merciful and forgiving anyway? That's the danger, but it's not right. We're to faithfully follow His Word and obey it to show that we respect His mercy. 
and highly regard it. And then finally, in this section of Deuteronomy, we have chapter 11, and yet another blessing, uh, perhaps the greatest of all, grace. It sums up the whole of God's approach to His people. He is gracious, the blessing of grace. For Moses and the Israelites, it's depicted in the land that He's providing. And verse 10 of chapter 11 has an unusual image uh, depicting, demonstrating God's grace. Uh, so, if you have a look at that with me, please. Chapter 11, verse 10. The land you are entering to take over is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you planted your seed and irrigated it by foot, as in a vegetable garden, but the land you are crossing the Jordan to take possession of is a land of mountains and valleys that drinks rain from heaven. It's a land the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are continually on it from the beginning of the year to its end. It's hard to know what it means there in verse 10 by irrigation, by foot. Uh, some commentators think perhaps it's something to do with directing little streams at your feet uh, into the right way, into vegetable gardens. That was back in Egypt. But now in Canaan, the Lord will grow the crops. He will send the rain. He will irrigate the land. He will do all the work. And that is grace. God giving and giving and giving. Again, there is the danger of idolatry. Verse 16, chapter 11, be careful or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. It, it, it's the danger of turning away from the Lord and worshiping other gods. Being enticed by other gods is the way that Moses puts it, as though after a certain period of time living in the land, after experiencing the produce of the land and enjoying the fruit of the land, they might just start to drift away. They might just gradually forget that these are all precious gifts. In the New Testament, grace comes in the person of Jesus. Paul writes to, Timoth, to Titus and says, for the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation, the appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is grace for us. He is grace, true grace, the undeserved love of God. But the danger is that we go after other gods, idols and secular worship, even when there's no comparison. The true God has given us everything, every blessing, salvation, redemption, new life, a new promised land. It's all of grace. So, as we sum up all these chapters, chapters 7 through to 11, are we being asked to walk a tightrope here with dangers all around us if we fall off, if we don't keep His word? No, we're not being asked to do that because Jesus has done it all for us. All we have to do is come to Him and become a Christian, become a disciple, just as the Israelites had already been rescued by God and then were asked to obey His commands. So God wants His people, those who have come to Christ, to trust and obey Jesus has won salvation on the cross. He's done it all. Now is the time to respond to that and respond by following His Word. That's the way to real blessing. Let's just take a moment now for prayer, please. So we bow our heads. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to use this time uh, to reflect upon you, upon the state of our world, upon the many blessings that you have given your people. Thank you for all these blessings that we've mentioned this morning, grace and mercy and protection and provision and love. They all come from you, Lord, and we want to show our gratitude by following your word. And we know that in that way, we will stay close to you. So please uh, continue to bless us. Help us to 
reflect upon you and on your word in this time as we think of a fresh start uh, once this pandemic clears. We pray these things today in Jesus' name. Amen. Now it's time for another song, uh, singing to God's praises, and Rebecca's going to lead us in that, of course, and uh, the song, if you want to look up the lyrics on another device, it's Everyone Needs Compassion, Uh, so hand over to Rebecca.
Well, thank you to Rebecca for being with us uh, this morning. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning as well. Please stay safe and we'll finish now with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.